During a big horror movie event, a group of teenagers realize that their favorite characters are there to eliminate them and they need to find a way to get out of the place alive. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Bloodfest, from 2018. On Halloween night, a mother and her son decide to watch horror movies together and Jeannie feels proud when she realizes that the young man isn't scared by those ghost stories. After saying goodbye to her husband, who has just gone up to the bedroom, Jeannie walks into the kitchen and notices that the light bulb isn't working. Even so, she heads for the fridge and, as she opens the door, she senses someone standing behind her. But when she looks back, she doesn't see anyone. Seconds later, Jeannie is attacked by a guy who has just broken into her house and her scream attracts the attention of Dax, who gets up from the sofa to check that his mother is all right. When he opens the kitchen door, the young man sees his mother's body lying on the floor and, next to her, the intruder with a knife in his hand. Just then, the masked man walks towards him. Luckily, his father appears and shoots the criminal, who falls to the ground after the first shot. Years later, the young man is still obsessed with supernatural monsters and his bedroom is full of references to all kinds of horror movies. Unlike her brother, Jamie, has no interest in bloody stories and when she finds out that Dax will be attending an event called Bloodfest, she tries to discourage him. The festival is known for being one of the biggest horror events of all time and the young man can't wait for the day to arrive. That morning, Dr. Conway calls his son for a brief chat and tells him that he is going to be interviewed by a news program. He then asks Dax to attend the interview, as he will be talking about the Bloodfest event and how his family is against it. During the conversation, Dr. Conway reveals that he found the ticket for the festival in his son's backpack and Dax says that he is old enough to choose the events he attends. The man can't understand how the young man can be so obsessed with those movies, since it was they that led one of Dr. Conway's patients to eliminate Jeannie. In order to prevent his son from attending this kind of event, the psychiatrist decides to destroy the wristband and Dax feels very frustrated, as all the tickets have already sold out and he won't be able to go to the festival with his friends. That day, when he meets Sam and Krill at work, Dax vents his frustration, but the pair advise him not to give up so easily. Just then, Dax calls Ashley, an up-and-coming actress who is part of the event's organizing committee, and manages to secure his entry to Bloodfest. When the big day finally arrives, the three friends are overjoyed and believe it will be the best night of their lives. The organizers rented a gigantic 700-hectare ranch in the middle of nowhere to set up tents and recreate the most iconic scenes from the greatest horror films in history. On arriving at the gate, Sam meets Trapper and exchanges a few glances with the young man. As promised, Ashley is there to welcome his old friend and make sure he gets into the festival. Thanks to her, Dax manages to get through the gate without his wristband and Ashley introduces him to her new boyfriend. Benjamin Kane is the director of the last film Ashley starred in and is excited to show his work to the festival participants. After thanking their old friend for her help, the trio goes to see the place and meets Roger Hinckley, the protagonist of Dax's favorite horror films. While trying to start a conversation with his idol, the young man shows him the tattoo he got in honor of the work he starred in, but Roger reveals that he doesn't like horror movies. Despite having acted in countless stories, he never watched his own movies, because he throw up everywhere every time he did a bloody scene. Frustrated after discovering the sad truth about his favorite actor, Dax and his friends go to see the opening night show. During the show, Anthony invites to the stage some of the scariest monsters that will be scattered around the ranch that night. However, when he sees Red wearing a mask and holding a knife, Dax remembers the night his mother perishes and begins to feel strangely unpleasant. At that moment, the presenter invites two young women onto the stage and they both have their bodies cut up by red. When the girls fall to the ground, the audience is horrified, but then starts applauding, believing that it was all just an act. Among the hundreds of people at the festival, Dax is one of the only ones to feel really frightened, as he realizes that the masked man is a real criminal. Then the security guards who are positioned around the stage switch on their chainsaws and start attacking the audience. At that moment, Anthony reveals that those people are actually there to take part in a horror reality show. The difference between what will happen that night and what happens in the movies is that those young people will have to fight for their lives, because all the eliminations filmed there will be real. When they realize what a mess they've gotten themselves into, the contestants start running around desperately and many of them are eliminated within the first few minutes. Terrified, Dax, Sam and Krill hide inside a warehouse. Soon after, Ashley and Lenjamin appear. Both of them are also looking for a place to hide, as the ranch is isolated in the middle of nowhere and they have no cell phone signal to call for help. To make matters worse, the gate is locked and the fences protecting the place are electric, which prevents the participants from escaping. While trying to find a way out, Ashley reveals that when she arrived at the festival all the doors were still closed. As she was part of the organizing committee, 
She was one of the first to arrive and entered through the yellow warehouse with the badge she had received. If they manage to get to the other side of the ranch, they'll be able to open the electronic lock and escape. Coincidentally, Krill has a map and flashlights in his backpack. As it will be necessary to cross hundreds of meters to reach the back gate, Lenjamin thinks this is a bad idea, as he is not willing to risk his life for this plan. However, when villains armed with chainsaws find them, the group has no choice but to leave. All the tents and stages have security cameras, so it's almost impossible to hide without being discovered. After escaping, the survivors end up in the middle of the forest and find a cemetery. To make sure he isn't left behind, Lenjamin decides to keep his girlfriend's badge, as he knows he's the only one who isn't part of that group of friends. Seeing those tombstones, Dax comes to the conclusion that they should go around, but Lenjamin thinks it's better for them to take the shortest route, as he finds the idea that they'll be attacked by zombies ridiculous. While the man yells at the rest of the team that all those tombstones are fake and part of the set, some zombies appear and drag the director deep into the earth. Then the youngsters spot a horde of zombies approaching and decide to run to the cabin. When they get there, they find Roger and use some furniture to hold the door open. At that moment, Ashley begins to weep over the elimination of her boyfriend and Dax freaks out, believing that there is no way of getting out of that place alive. The young man is convinced that everyone will be eliminated that night, but Sam tries to cheer him up and asks his friend to use his knowledge of horror movies to help them survive. Suddenly, one of the zombies breaks into the hut and attacks Krill. Immediately, Dax hits the enemy on the head with a hammer and discovers that the zombies are being controlled by electrodes. Looking through the crack in the window, Sam discovers where the signals are coming from and sets off with Dax to destroy the equipment. Just then, a zombie manages to break into the cabin through a trap door and attacks Roger. Soon afterwards, other monsters appear and the survivors are surrounded. While Sam tries to keep the enemies at bay, Dax rips out the wires that send the signal to the electrodes and all the zombies fall to the ground. Now that the way is clear, the youngsters have the chance to escape and Roger asks permission to go with them, because he knows that the guy who is left behind is always the next to be eliminated in horror movies. During the walk, the group enters a new setting and encounters the main character from the movie The Arbor Day. Coincidentally, this is Dax's favorite film, which starred Roger. At the sight of that bearded man with an axe in his hands, the survivors run in desperation and enter a school to hide. When they get there, the group meets Zachary and Ashley recognizes him as one of her favorite actors. The man says he went to the festival with some of his friends and, when the attack began, they all hid in the forest. However, as they tried to escape from the ranch, their friends were eliminated and Zachary was the only survivor. The man then claims that all the doors and windows are locked, so no one will be able to get into that school, as he is the only one with the keys. At that moment, Arborist appears and cuts Zachary's neck. After the actor's elimination, the survivors have to flee and find a way out of the school, since all the exits are locked. Meanwhile, Krill, who has fled in the opposite direction to the rest of the group, finds some young people having fun around a campfire without even suspecting what is going on. The guys spent the last few hours in the company of beautiful women and didn't go to the opening of the show, so they didn't witness all the chaos. However, while Krill is talking to Rain, the guys who were near the campfire are attacked by the vampires, but Krill manages to escape, as his loyalty to his friends makes him leave before having his blood devoured. Meanwhile, hiding inside one of the school rooms, Dax and Roger try to find a solution to defeat their current enemy, as they are the ones who know the character from the movie The Arbor Day best. Roger's mission is to distract him by pretending to be his father and he succeeds in his task. However, during the conversation with his supposed son, the actor gets his name wrong and ends up being attacked. Roger is about to be eliminated when Dax attracts the enemy's attention while Sam and Ashley search for the key. When the girls finally manage to open the door, they come across Krill, who is carrying a burning wooden stake. Seeing his friend, Dax runs towards him and bends down so that Krill can pierce the arborist's chest. After getting rid of the enemy, Sam finds a ladder that leads to the attic and the team discovers that this place is actually a tunnel that leads to the other side of the ranch. Hoping to avoid the monsters that are scattered around the festival, they think it's a good idea to make their way through the tunnels, but they soon come across a door. Luckily, Krill has the necessary equipment to open it and, when he does, he comes across a terrifying movie theater full of creepy dolls. Despite this, the group decides to keep going, as they know that they will soon reach the back gate that way. After crossing the movie theater, the team finds another flight of stairs and, during the descent, they hear someone calling for help. Immediately, Sam rushes to help and finds Trapper. The young man is trapped in one of the game traps and asks the girl to put her arms inside two boxes to save him. However, in doing so, it's Sam who ends up getting caught in the trap and Trapper escapes. 
At this point, Roger and Dax show up, but Ashley and Krill end up entering the wrong door and end up in a bathroom. At that moment, the girl sits down on the floor and begins to cry, because she knows that they will never be able to escape. Minutes before he perishes, Lenjamin picked up the badge that opens the door to the yellow warehouse, but Ashley hadn't told anyone about it until now. When he discovers the truth, Krill says that they will find a way to open that door, but Ashley doesn't believe it. Since she's going to perish anyway, the young woman decides to take one last bath and invites Krill to join her. Meanwhile, Dax and Roger look for a way to free Sam, but every time they try to cheat to free her, the chains pull even harder on the girl's arms. Realizing that the young woman will never get out of the trap alive, Roger decides to sacrifice himself and swaps places with her. At that moment, the two young couples see their friend being crushed and, terrified, decide to leave to find the rest of their group. A few miles away, Dax's father is giving his interview to the newspaper and realizes that his son hasn't shown up to see him. While talking about Bloodfest, which is happening right now, Dr. Conway realizes that Dax may have gone to the event and leaves the interview to go after his son. When the four friends meet again, Dax reveals that Roger is eliminated and Ashley decides to tell the truth about her badge. Suddenly, a masked villain appears and the four friends have to flee once again. After finding themselves in an empty room, they come across a ladder that leads back to the surface and manage to get out of the underground. In the control room, Anthony is informed that the containment system has failed, as the characters from all the films are leaving their respective sets. But instead of worrying about this situation, the organizer is more excited because he can't wait to find out what will happen next. After climbing through the trapdoor, the quartet discovers that they have ended up in a circus full of bizarre clowns and they all end up surrounded. They are about to be attacked by the clowns when a horde of zombies approaches and the villains from the two films start fighting each other. At this point, the four friends see an opportunity to escape. However, on spotting Lenjamin, Ashley runs towards him to retrieve the badge and ends up being eliminated. Before losing consciousness, she throws the badge at her friends so that they have a chance to escape. Minutes later, the trio arrive at the yellow warehouse and find Trapper. Furious, Sam walks towards him but gives up attacking him when he reveals that he knows where the exit is. After swiping his card, Krill discovers that he also needs a password to open the door and uses a device to try to hack it. Just then, Rain appears and Krill is happy to see her, because until now he hadn't suspected that the beautiful young woman was a vampire. However, on seeing her mouth smeared with blood, Krill discovers the truth, but it's too late as he ends up being bitten. As Dax rushes to help his friend up, Sam takes a wooden stake and pierces Rain's heart, causing her elimination. However, this was not enough to prevent Krill's elimination, as the young man lost a lot of blood as a result of the bite. At that moment, Trapper manages to open the door and, surprisingly, Dr. Conway appears. The psychiatrist is armed and tries to reassure his son. He then shoots Trapper in the head while Sam is captured by one of the villains. When Jamie removes the mask, Dax discovers that this is his sister and is extremely confused. Dr. Conway then begins to explain himself and says that he has always tried to warn young people that those movies are dangerous. After that night, the man believes that no movie industry will ever create horror films again. While his father goes to the control tower, Dax orders his sister to free Sam and then hugs her. At this point, Jamie reveals that, since his mother's perishment, his father has been working on a plan to put an end to horror movies. All those eliminations were the idea of the psychiatrist, who structured the event to be some kind of bizarre experiment. Listening to his sister talk quietly about all those eliminations, Dax realizes that she is a criminal and feels that he never really knew her. Finally, Jamie advises the couple to leave and says that all the people inside that ranch will be eliminated by dawn. However, before they could leave, Amy, who is in the control room watching all the participants, closes the door and the pair end up trapped inside. Furious about everything that happened that night and all the people she lost, Sam decides to get up and go to the tower, because she is determined to put an end to that game. After picking up some weapons to defend themselves on the way, Sam and Dax get into a truck and drive through the ranch towards the tower. When he arrives at the control room, Conway discovers that there are still 237 survivors, so he plans to preempt the explosion, which is not scheduled to take place until the morning. Just then, Jamie appears and reveals that his brother is already on his way home. After almost losing his son in the game he himself created, the psychiatrist is stunned and wants to end the event once and for all, but Anthony manages to convince him to wait until dawn. Meanwhile, Sam and Dax need to get rid of the monsters trying to attack their vehicle and manage to eliminate them with their own weapons. The young man then runs over the nun with the truck he stole and Amy is confused when she realizes that several villains from different horror films are being eliminated in a short space of time. At that moment, 
Conway orders Anthony to activate the vibration that was used in the asylum to try to calm the patients. However, the effect was exactly the opposite of what was expected and the madman became even more violent. Upon hearing this, Mac begins to worry, as he realizes that the two organizers of the event are not worried about causing the eliminations of the employees and collaborators who were hired to eliminate the public. This vibration will be transmitted through the bracelet being worn by everyone on the ranch, including Amy and Mac. As soon as the vibration is activated, the man suffers a fit of rage and gets up to attack Conway, but is eliminated with a shot to the head. Billy then appears and is relieved not to have a bracelet, but he ends up being attacked by Amy and the two are eliminated by the psychiatrist. The same happens with the other survivors who, after being hit by the vibration, start acting violently. While driving, Dax ends up being attacked by Sam, because unlike him, the girl entered with her bracelet. As his father destroyed his bracelet a few days before the event, Dax is unaffected by the vibration, but becomes the target of his best friend and ends up causing an accident. After the collision, the girl faints and Dax leaves her safely inside the vehicle so that he can enter the tower. The problem is that, shortly afterwards, Sam wakes up and manages to free herself, then attacks her friend while Conway watches everything from the security cameras. When he realizes that his son's life is in danger, he becomes furious and shifts the blame onto Anthony. The psychiatrist is about to shoot his partner when Dax appears, but the presence of his son doesn't stop him from attacking Anthony. Realizing that the young man plans to end the game, Conway points a gun at his own son, but is unable to shoot. Knowing that Dax will tell the truth to everyone if he manages to get out of that place alive, the doctor decides to end his life along with that of his children and is about to press the button that will blow up the ranch when Jamie throws a knife in his direction. At that moment, Conway's abdomen is pierced and he falls out of the tower window. Sam then appears and attacks his friend, but Dax removes the bracelet from the young woman's wrist and she regains her sanity. Meanwhile, Jamie runs out of the window to escape arrest, as he knows her brother will hand her over to the police. In the morning, after leaving the ranch, Sam and Dax wonder if anyone has survived, but just then they hear an explosion. In the end, out of the hundreds of people who bought tickets to attend Bloodfest, they were the only survivors. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.